Swayam Prabha Digital India Educated India So far we were concerned with a model that is linear but stochastic observations are also linear functions in the state the model noise observation noise initial condition are all normally distributed this is the classic LQG problem and in this case we had a complete solution for the filtering problem. So, in this sense Kalman solved one of the uh, fundamental data assimilation problem of assimilating data into an imperfect model where the imperfections are captured by stochastic model noise. Now we are going to be uh, talking about extensions of Kalman's ideas to assimilating data. In this case the data may be nonlinear function of the state the model itself may evolve according to a nonlinear map. So, we are going to be concerned with the extension to nonlinear stochastic models. The stochastic stochasticity comes from our assumption relating to assuming that the model noise is again white and the observations are again uh, corrupted by observation noise which is Gaussian. We are again going to fall back on the Gaussian assumption for the both the model noise and the observation noise initial conditions are also going to be random we will assume that to be also Gaussian as in the previous case. The only the primary difference is that because the model is nonlinear the forecast loses the Gaussianity property right at the first step. So, we have to contend with non Gaussian processes uh, arising out of the nonlinear systems and that uh, uh, presents lots of challenges in the data simulation process and we are going to provide uh, 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 how to approach the filtering problem. In this case we will not be uh, first talking about uh, first moment, second moment the mean and covariance we will be talking about probabilistic characterization of the forecast the probabilistic characterization of the analysis we will take we will try to give, give an evolution of the forecast probability density analysis probability density these are in general infinite dimensional problems because we are trying to talk about an evolution of the density function in the model space and and all the associated uh, uh, mathematical problems, challenges, computational problems and challenges that is what we are going to see first. So, let us consider a stochastic model, a nonlinear stochastic model. We are also trying to generalize the forcing WK plus 1 is a model noise vector we are going to assume the model noise vector is r dimensional sigma x is the coefficient that multiplies the model noise sigma x is a state dependent matrix functions matrix of functions the matrix sigma is n by r we assume it is full rank we assume it captures the model errors. So, if I assume sigma x k is equal to identity if I assume r is equal to n and sigma x k is identity then uh, the the observation uh, the, the, the model error is simply a sequence of state independent Gaussian random uh, variables here this is a state dependent noise. So, so this is state dependent. So, we are assuming that the model is driven by in general a state dependent in principle it could be a general state dependent noise process. 
r is a variable r can be in principle less than n r refers to the 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 the, the degrees of freedom that the noise has in terms of in terms of its ability to affect the evolution of the state when r is equal to 1 there is only one scalar noise that affects all the components of the state vector when r is equal to n there are n different noise components um, that can affect um, all the components of the state vector depending on the structure of the mat the state dependent matrix sigma sigma x. So, there are you can see from the setup uh, by appropriately choosing the sigma matrix by appropriately choosing the value r one can simulate quite a variety of assumptions one can realize quite a variety of assumptions relating to the nature and type of model noise uh, uh, um, into the system. So, w k is mean 0 w k has a, a covariance q k q k is a matrix of size r by r the special cases are two special cases are r is n and 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 and, and sigma x k is equal to i n is the identity matrix when r is n and sigma x k is equal to i n what is that we do um, there is no state dependent noise the noise is independent of the state the noise becomes a pure uh, 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 Gaussian white noise. The, the initial conditions are random again it is a multivariate normal distribution with a mean m naught and, and, and covariance p naught hat. So, um, given x k w k is random. So, I can compute the distribution of sigma x k w k plus 1 the probability density of this vector. So, please please realize this is an n vector sigma x k times w k is an n vector and uh, so it is it is mean 0 it is a covariance is given by is given by this expression sigma q k plus 1 sigma transpose. So, we have talked about the choice of the model error or model noise we have also uh, talked about the choice of initial conditions. Now, we are going to be talking about the properties of the evolution of the state of the system then namely the forecast when there is no observation that is what is called analysis of stochastic dynamics. We are interested in the conditional probability density of x k we are we are interested in the evolution of conditional uh, probability of, of of I should say x k plus 1 given the past. So, what is the probability that x k plus 1 will find itself in a state um, in a set a. So, a is supposed to be in this case a subset of r n please realize in some cases we use a is for the subset in some cases use a for uh, matrices. So, the the occasion will tell you what that symbol means. So, in this case a is a set. So, what is that we are trying to talk about given the past trajectory model starting from x naught to x k plus 1 we are interested in trying to find out what is the probability that x k plus 1 will belong to a set a in here x k is the present. So, we can think of this x k k x k time k x k is the present this is k plus 1 this is x k plus 1. So, we were trying we are trying to ask ourselves the following question let me draw the picture a little bit differently this is k plus 1. Uh, this is x k plus 1. So, given the state x k what is the probability x k plus 1 will be a subset of the set a. So, this is the set a at time k plus 1. Now, 
I am I'm, I'm, I'm given the state of the system at time k minus 1, I am and given the state of the system as time 1, I am given the state of the system at time 0 even though I am given the complete history from 0 to k if this probability depends only on x k but not on the past. So, k is the present. So, given the present the future probability the, the future evolution of the state is independent of the is independent of the past that means the state of the system from 0 to k minus 1 does not play a role once x k is given in determining what f k plus 1 is going to be that kind of property is called Markov property. So, what does the Markov property say given the present fast is inconsequential to consider the future. So, the probability that at, at time k plus 1 it will belong to the set A depends only on the current state x k and not on the past. So, the model equation given um, in the previous slide in fact represents a Markov process as it is evident from the relation if I am given x k I do not have to know anything m of x k can be computed sigma x k can be computed w k k plus 1 can be generated it is w k plus 1 is the one that brings randomness into the in deciding what x k plus, plus 1 is going to be. So, given x k the value of x k plus 1 does not depend on anything before x k it depends on x k and the noise that comes into the system after the time k that is why the model is said to be a discrete time Markov model and the process generated by this model is called a discrete time Markov process. The notion of being Markov is very fundamental it is a, a stochastic generalization of the deterministic principle. What is the principle of determinism? determinism? Um, if I have a differential equation if I know the state of the system at time k in principle that is enough to be able to compute the state of the system at time k plus 1 because the, the, the differential equation tells you the rate at which the system evolves starting from time k. Therefore, a um, uh, Markov property can in many ways thought of a simple extension of the fundamental properties of, uh, of, of deterministic dynamical system. In this case uh, uh, we are con simply concerned with the discrete time evolution the continuous time evolution of the Markov process theory still exists, but that theory is little bit more technical uh, in order to reduce the, the amount of mathematical technicality that one needs to know we confine our attention to the analysis of nonlinear difference equation um, in uh, which are driven by a state which could be depend uh, dependent on state dependent noise vector and the evolution together des describing a discrete time Markov process. Therefore, we are interested in what is called the one step transition probability given x k what is the probability uh, uh, of, of, of x k plus 1 this is the one step conditional probability is a one step conditional transition probability. So, if I am given um, x k m of x k plus um, 1 depends on m of x k plus uh, the noise term given x k sigma x k is given expected value of w k plus 1 is 0 therefore, the mean is essentially the deterministic part m of x k the covariance of, of, of the state is, is given by sigma q k plus 1 sigma transpose sigma transpose. So, given x k x k plus 1 is Gaussian and it has it has a density function whose expression is little bit complex and but for for, for explicit uh, 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 analysis I am giving the, 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 the distribution in this particular form and that essentially tells you how the system evolves. So, once I know the initial distribution once I know how the distribute how the system goes from time k to k plus 1 I should in principle be able to pull the system forward in time. So, we are now going to talk about how 
knowing one step transition probability we can compute multi step transition probabilities. Let us consider transition from time 0 to time 1 to time 2. Let us assume I am in state x 0 to start with. I would like to be able to find out what is the probability that x 2 will be at the position shown in the figure. So, uh, in order to go from x naught to x 2 I had to go through an intermediary stage. The intermediary stage um, is the value of the state at time 1. So, from x naught I can go to any one point in the one dimension in, in the in the in the, in the <coughs> x space in this case for simplicity I am trying to show uh, um, um, the state space as a vertical line as if it was a one dimensional, but the same thing applies to uh, um, multi dimensional we are simply representing the multi dimensional space by yes, a, a vertical line. So, x 1 refers to the state at, at, at time 1. So, go from x naught is fixed x 2 is fixed to go from x naught to x 2 I had to go through some x 1 in the medi in, in the intermediary. So, with this the probability of going from x naught at time 0 to x 2 at time 1 at time 2 is given by conditional probability of x x 2 given x naught. So, that is what the conditional probability given x 2 x naught. So, I would like to be able to argue now I started from x naught I want to go to x 2 x 1 can take any intermediary values. So, I am going to go one step from x naught to x 1 and from the chosen x 1 I go to x 2 this x 1 can be any point in the in the space in the state space. So, I am going to have to multiply this conditional probability p of x 2 given x 1 times p of x 1 given x naught and integrate it with respect to x 1 d x 1 this sum total of the product of the conditional probabilities will give you a two step conditional probability is called a multi step conditional probability. This relation of trying to uh, 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 find how a multi an expression for the multi step transition based on one step transition um, has come to be called Chapman Kolmogorov equation. It is a very basic equation. I can now I can now uh, ex, 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 extend this to a general case instead of 0 to 2 I can now think of the following let us assume I am in state q I am sorry I am in state x q at time q. So, q is some instant in time I want to be able to go to k I would be able to go to x k at time k. If I want to go from q to k I am go I have to go through some intermediary stage you so you can think of that intermediate stage to be you can think of that intermediate stage to be from 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 q to p so p is the time this is xp so you go from xq to xp from xp to xk you go from xq to xp and xp to xk so xp can take any value in here therefore q is fixed k is fixed q uh, the p x p is are variable I am going to integrate it with respect to x p I can um, once I integrate this I get the transition probability from step q to step k. So, what is this this is this is the transition from q to p this is the transition from p to k. So, this is a combination of two multi step multi step transition probabilities. So, by I, I, I can so I can break this uh, p to be many things. So, I can go from q to q plus 1 q plus and then q plus 1 to k that is a possibility in this case p is equal to p is equal to q plus 1. I can split it like q to k minus 1 to k. So, I can so in this case p is equal to q plus 1 in this case p is equal to k minus 1 and so uh, I can reduce the multi step transition by a sequence of one step transitions by a sequence of one step transitions. So, um, I, I, I would like to rewrite this so x I would like to be able to rewrite this equation recursively in this way p x k given 
x q is equal to summation p x k given x k minus 1 times p x k minus 1 given times x q times d x k minus 1. So, q to p is related to k minus 1 to k and q to k minus 1. So, this is one step transition this is the multi step transition I can convert this likewise. So, this is a recursive relation using this recursive relation I can compose multi step transition probability involving any number of steps. So, this general this equation is called Chapman Kolmograph equation for probability density functions multi step transition probability. So, given a Markov process a Markov process is uniquely defined by the initial condition or the initial distribution and the one step trait transition mechanism. If the one step trait transition mechanism is specified I can create multi step transition mechanisms probab the probability values using Chapman Kolmograph equations. So, that is the that is the conclusion so far. Now, so what is the statement of the nonlinear problem? I am given an initial condition p naught x naught. Please understand p k x k is the probability density of the state x k at time k is the probability density of the state x k at time k. In general this probability density will depend on k therefore, the subscript for p refers to the time varying density of the state x k as the state evolves according to the dynamical system. So, what is the question given p naught x naught this is the initial state distribution which is given by x naught m naught hat and p naught hat please remember that x naught is equal to m naught p naught. So, I am trying to define my initial analysis to be m naught my initial analysis covariance to be p naught. So, with this initialization this represents the initial distribution given the initial distribution of the state I would like to be able to find the distribution of the state at time k this is what is called the 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 probability distribution at time k probability distribution at time k at time k. So, I am I, I want to remind the reader now there are several probability density functions we are involved in one is the initial probability density another one is the transition probability from k minus 1 to k another one is p k x k. Now, in all this we know this transition density from the model we are given this initial condition from external specification that is equivalent to specifying the initial conditions for the dynamical system. So, given these two our job is to be able to compute the state the state probability density function at time k. So, this is called the state probability distribution of x k I would like to be able to compute this quantity. Now, we are going to look at means by which we can arrive at this evolution of the state probability density functions in time. So, let me state that once more given the model given the forcing given the initial condition the model defines the one sub transition the initial condition randomness is given. So, you can see there are two sources of randomness one coming from the choice of initial condition another coming from the one step state transition these two together decide the state probability density function the state probability density function is called is is the p k x k our ultimate goal is to be able to find out how the states of the model are distributed at any, any given time p k what is p k x k for any k. Given this I would like to be able to start from what is called the joint density. If I have two random variables 
I can consider I'm, I'm th that always exists in an appropriately chosen probability of space there is a joint density then I can consider the marginal densities I am assuming that we are all familiar with the notion of marginal densities conditional densities uh, joint densities all fu basic fundamental concepts. So, consider a joint density of the state from x naught to x k using a simple uh, uh, conditional probability I can express the condition of the joint density as the product of uh, uh, another joint density and the conditional density. So, this is p of x k given x k minus 1 through x naught times p of x k through x k minus 1 through x naught. So, conditioned on the knowledge from x naught to x k minus 1 I can I can I can split this into a product of these two, but I have already assumed the process is Markov. So, knowing x k minus 1 I do not have to know how I got to x k minus 1 the past is of no consequence is deciding the future if the present is known. So, x k minus 1 is the present. So, the this conditional probability reduces to a one step trait transition probability of the Markov process we are considering. So, this is the <coughs> joint density from state 0 to state k minus 1. So, you can now see the joint density from 0 uh, of the state from 0 to k minus k can be broken down into the product of joint density from 0 to k minus 1 and one step transition from k minus 1 to k this recurrence relation uh, this is the recurrence relation and this I can apply this recurrence relation to this term on the right hand side. If I apply this continuously now I can you can readily see the 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 the, the, the joint density is expressible as a product of the conditional densities that is a typo this is x sub i this is x i minus 1. So, the the product of the conditional density is times the initial density. So, this is the initial density this is the conditional density. So, I can you can readily see the 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 joint density is the product of the one step state transition densities and the initial density. One step state transition density is given by the mark the model this is the initial density. So, I am expressing the conditional density as a product of everything that I know. <coughs> so, I am now going to be looking for expressions for the joint density little bit more characterization. So, we now know p of x naught is normal one step trans state transition probability which is the conditional probability that is also normal we have already argued about the normality of the one step state transition probability for the model equations. In the previous step we have expressed the joint density as the product of the conditional densities and the initial densities therefore, I can express the joint density as the product of the normal densities and another normal density the product of k normal densities referring to the k step transition from 0 to k and the initial density. If I substitute the expressions for each of these normal densities and simplify I get a constant times exponential of minus g k minus 1 half of g k times the initial density where g k has an expression which is <coughs> the sum of x k minus 1 minus m of x i minus 1 transpose the inverse of the covariance matrix of the one step transition times x i minus m of x i minus 1. So, that is a quadratic form this quadratic form is a nonlinear uh, 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 is, is nonlinear is much more than <coughs> quadratic because m in general is 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 a nonlinear function. This will become yeah, an actual quadratic form only when the model is linear. When the model is not linear, so what do you mean by saying model is linear? M of x i minus one 
is equal to m of x i minus 1 that is the linear case. In this case it is a quadratic form if not this is not a quadratic form. So, in principle this one is not a quadratic form it is it is more complex than a quadratic function it is a nonlinear function. Much of the difficulty in computing the joint density arises from the the this complex nature of the nonlinearity that enters into the description that in the description of the joint density. So, the ck is given by this constant. So, given this now we have computed the joint density um, at least mathematically uh, in the form given by g k in the, in the form that is given by uh, 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 the exponent g k the expression for the exponent g k is a complex nonlinear function. If you recall we are in the middle of discussion of nonlinear filtering in the case of nonlinear filtering because of the nonlinearity we cannot simply be content with first moment and second moment. The complete solution is, is, is given by the entire probability density function for the forecast for analysis. Once you know the probability density function then we can compute any number of moments first moment second moment etcetera. etcetera. This is largely because of the fact that the nonlinearity in the system even though the, the, the initial condition may be uh, may be may be uh, Gaussian distributed may be the one step transition probabilities of the nonlinear system that defines the Markov process which are also Gaussian. In spite of the fact if you want to be able to compute the state distribution at any given time that is highly a nonlinear function and, and it is far from being normal we are trying to get a handle on, on this important quantity namely. Uh, p k x k you may recall from the previous page. What is p k x k is uh, p k x k is the probability density function of the state at time k. There are two k's one for the state x sub k and the state itself is changing another there is a subscript for p p of k of x k p of k refers to uh, uh, the density the probability density of the state x k at time k the, 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 the subscript k associated with p tells that the probability density function is changing in time. Not only the state is changing in time the probability density is also changing in time. It is this quantity which is of interest to us and we are trying to um, uh, uh, express the joint densities to start with I am trying to go over some of the things we have already done. So, I am trying to compute the joint density of the state from 0 from time 0 to time k using this recurrence we just saw it can be expressed as the product of conditional densities and the initial density. Initial density is normal condition density is normal. So, the joint density is given by constant c k times exponential minus 1 half time g k normal with uh, uh, mean m naught hat and p naught hat the crux of the expression relates to analyzing what is contained in gk. gk is given by this complicated expression which is the exponent and the large uh, um, the, the, the most of the difficulty arises from the fact m is not a linear function in case m of x i is equal to x i minus 1 is equal to m times x i minus 1 the exponent becomes a simple quadratic function because m is general not necessarily a linear function this exponent is um, in general more nonlinear than quadratic functions. So, in general they are quadratic functions and um, this is largely the major difficulty in trying to quantify the state distribution the distribution of x k at time k which is p k x k. But at least theoretically one can compute the the joint density of the state from time 0 to time k. Once you have the joint density from um, time 0 to time k I am still interested in finding not the joint density, but the state density at time k p k x k. You know that p k x k is the marginal distribution of the joint density. So, this is the joint density 
if I integrate the joint density over all the variables other than x k. So, this is integration is from x naught x 1 through x k minus 1. So, there are k iterated integrals each of these iterated integrals <coughs> are integrals over r n because r n is the state space. So, when I say integral over x i that is equivalent to integral over r n. So, integral over x i integral over r n. So, this is the repeated integration in the in the n dimensional space. Please recall we are not trying to do the actual integration we are trying to develop the theory. So, the theory can go anywhere, but ultimately we are interested in trying to compute the probability density function for the state x k at time k. We can obtain now a recursive form for this p k x k. Why this p k x k can be expressed in, 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 in a recursive form? p k x k is the probability density of the state x k at time k. So, if I know p k minus 1 x k minus 1 that is the probability density of the state k minus 1 at time k minus 1. Then from x k I can go to x k minus 1 by the one step transition probability rule. So, given this I can compute the transition density from k minus 1 to x k. So, this integration is over x k minus 1. So, this is this essentially follows from basic uh, uh, probability theory a uh, basic probabilistic arguments. In particular when k is 1 p 1 x 1 that is in the probability density of the state at time 1 <coughs> is equal to the initial state distribution that is the initial condition this is the one step transition probability the initial density is Gaussian the conditional density is Gaussian, but the conditional density is a function of the model map model map is highly nonlinear. Therefore, p 1 x 1 can in principle be expressed by this integral, but it is far from being Gaussian that is the primary difference between the linear and the nonlinear filter. Much of the difficulty associated with the nonlinear filtering at least in one part comes from this <coughs> inability to preserve normality under nonlinear transformation. So, uh, uh, now let us give a little bit more life to this. P naught x naught is is normal. Uh, P of x one given x naught is normal, but if I substitute all the normal expressions for this, this integral becomes equal to this. Well, I am now going to talk about the exponent. The exponent is alpha times x one x naught. That alpha times alpha of x one x naught is given by this function. That's the exponent that describes the product density the product of the conditional density and the initial density you can readily see this m is a model map this product that tries to make it a nonlinear function. So, I cannot simply rewrite it at Gaussian and uh, this alpha of x 1 x naught has also another term that comes from the initial condition. So, the initial condition current contribution is quadratic but the contribution from one step transition is not it is a combination of these two terms makes p 1 x 1 far from being Gaussian that is not that is that is the real uh, uh, rub when it comes to uh, uh, nonlinear filtering as you move from linear to nonlinear maps as you lean as you as you go from linear to nonlinear models. So, if I can uh, so by this we have seen that p 1 x 1 is not normal therefore, p k x k is not normal the non normality continues to dominate the show because the, the state distributions are not normal it is not enough to compute the mean and the variance I need to be able to compute the entire distribution. So, the nonlinear filter seeks to up, update not the mean and the covariance as the linear Kalman filter did. Let us go back what is the thing we did in the Kalman filter we updated the forecast mean we updated the forecast covariance we update the analysis mean we update the analysis covariance because everything is normal by knowing the mean and the variance I know the entire distribution that is not the case and that is that is largely the difficulty. So, p k x k in principle one can compute the only way to be able to compute these things is numerically of course, there are still very many good 
numerical integration packages one can utilize to be able to compute this. But what is that we are seeking? We are seeking something a sequential algorithm. What is the sequential algorithm? Like in Kalman filter, I am going from state uh, 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 time k to time k plus one. So knowing the analysis and its covariance at time k, I would like to be able to compute the forecast and this covariance at time k plus one. Observation comes. I am now going to recompute the analysis and the covariance at the next time interval. That's the sequential nature. That's what we are looking for. So we we we, we would like to go from time k to time k plus 1 we would like to be able to update p k minus 1 x k minus 1 to p k x k. If I can do that that is what the sequential algorithm is all about. Please recall each of these are functions each of these are continuous I am assuming the density functions are continuous these are functions continuous functions defined over the n dimensional space and uh, the integral of this uh, must be 1 these functions have to be positive. Now, we can see uh, 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 the, the I am talking about non I am um, talking about positive function functions that are non negative and whose integral has to be 1 and they are defined the n dimensional space and then n is large 100, 1000, 10,000, million you can see the associated difficulties in trying to keep the non negativity of this function when you are trying to do the numerical computation. These are some of the challenges one fee uh, what one will find themselves in when you are trying to convert these things into numerical algorithms. <coughs> so, what is that we have accomplished? We have simply analyzed the model forecast with no observation starting from the initial distribution knowing the one step transition probability of the underlying Markov process defined by the model. I am now at least theoretically be able to explain uh, or ex, uh, express p k x k. So, we, need, we, we started from we started from p naught x naught we had access to p k x k minus 1 from the, by combining these now I have an expression for p k x k. No, 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 no data is involved it is simply model analysis. This idea of trying to explain the evolution of p k x k that is part of the stochastic dynamics that is the stochastic dynamics part. <laughs> so, the complete information that one can hope to give in the case of a stochastic dynamics is the probability is the evolution of the probability density function. Now, let us bring in the filter filter means observation. So, when I am going to be developing expressions for the nonlinear filter I have to have now two kinds of densities one is the predictor density another is the filter density. What is the predictor density? It is the density of the state at time k plus 1 given all the observations. So, that embeds the model as well as the observation. So, we are going to call this as the predicted density. The filter density is going to be f of k f x k which is which is given all the observations from 1 to k I would like to get the best estimate of the state at time k. Please recall the Kolmogorov uh, Wiener definition given all the information up to time k estimating the state of the system at time k is called the filter problem given all the information up from time 1 to k trying to know the state of the <coughs> system at time k plus 1 that is a prediction problem. Here instead of simply predicting the mean and the covariance we have to predict the entire distribution itself. So, this is the predictor density this is the filter density. We have some idea of the uh, state density evolution. Now, I would like to talk about the structure of the filter density. So, f of k x k the filter density also changes in time. So, f of sub k of x k x k changes in time f of k also changes in time much like the state density distribution changed. So, by definition this is equal to the the 
probability density of x k given z 1 to k the observations from time 1 to time k. This can be written the joint the, I'm, I'm, <coughs> this can be written as the integral of the conditional density of the state of the system from x naught to x k given z 1 to k in the integration is from k minus 1 x k minus 2 and x naught and that, that is the repeated integration in here that comes essentially from basic uh, 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 definition of the density functions. I want you to understand these are all mathematical possibilities we want to know that it is first mathematically feasible to describe what I want uh, leaving the computational problem after the feasibility studies have, 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 have been completed. So, this conditional density of the state at time k given the observation from 1 to k is essentially the, the marginal of the joint conditional density uh, integrated over x 0 to x k minus 1. I, I think that should be pretty clear from basic probability argument. The predicted density now is p k plus 1 I am giving uh, again expressions for this filter density and predicted density. We saw the filter density in equation 1 we, we are now giving the predicted density in equation 2. Predicted density is likewise you have the look at this now the joint predicted density conditioned on z 1 to z of 1 to k integrated over 0 to k. So, that is the expression for the predicted density these two densities in principle make sense, but these are all not in the recursive form. So, what is our goal to say I have a nonlinear filter is to be able to rewrite these two equations 1 and 2 in a recursive form. So, we arrive at a simple recursive form and who is going to provide the key to the recursive form the Markov property the underlying Markov property of the stochastic model please understand that is the key. So, what is the Markov model essentially tells you if I know the state at time k and if I know what comes after time k knowing what comes after time k I should be able to precisely probabilistically predict what the state will be. We would not know the exact value, but we would be able to tell the distribution of the state of the system at the next time. The Markov property depends critically on the one step state transition probability and you are going to exploit that property to be able to write equation 1 and equation 2 in a simple beautiful recursive form. Once that is accomplished at least in principle we would have solved the nonlinear filtering problem to tell <coughs> how to make the prediction of the density of the predicted state. Then given the predicted density and the distribution of the observation I am going to get the, the, the filter density. The filter density represents the analysis the predicted density represents the forecast, forecast step. So, you can see essentially all the ingredients of the Kalman filter are, 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 are alive and well instead of instead of computing the vectors and matrices which are the first and second moment we are going to have to update the entire functions over the n dimensional space that is that is that is the key to understanding nonlinear non filter equations. So, with this as a background now I am going to talk about manipulating the expressions for f k f s k is what I want. Now, let us start with, with, with a basic statement given the observation from 1 to k the, the condition on that I have a probability density over the state from x naught to x k. So, that is the conditional probability distribution given the observation up to time k. A hey, you can you can see the following I am I am x k is involved I am also interested in the trajectory of the system starting from x x 0 to x k I am conditioned on uh, I, I am conditioning everything on all the observations up to including time k z 1 colon k z 1 colon k represents all the information that are obtained from time 1 to time k. Of course, inherent in here is the model information too. Why? F going from x naught to x 1 is given by the model. 
So, there is model information, there is observation information. So, this is the gobbledygook mix of both the model and the observations. <coughs> now, using Bayes' rule, this conditional probability can be written as Z1k conditioned on the state 0 to k times the probability of the trajectory going from 0 to k divided by p the probability of observing the observations from 1 to k that essentially follows from simple Bayes rule. <coughs> so, we have already applied Bayes rule as in 3. Now, I am going to I am going to express this probability which is the probability of the trajectory starting from x naught x k. We have already seen using Markov property the joint probability of the trajectory starting from x naught to x 1 is given by p naught of x naught. So, we can we can we can talk about this now. So, p naught of x naught then p of x 1 given x naught then p of x 2 given x 1 all the way up to p of x uh, uh, k minus 1 times x k. So, what does it tell you? This is the probability of observing a particular trajectory of the system starting from x naught and it is this is encapsulated in, in, in here. It is simply the product of the transition probabilities that define the path times times the initial distribution initial distribution. So, what is this? This is a stochastic analog of simply recursing the set of equations simply recursing a set of equations. I will give you a quick analog in a linear system if I have x k plus 1 is equal to m times x k x naught is given from here we would know x k is equal to m to the power k x naught. So, I should be able to relate the system at time k to the time x naught through the k step transition probability matrix uh, the kth power of it and that is what happens in the linear system. In the nonlinear system this cannot be done, but you can think of this to be an analog of, of what happens what happens in, in, the, in, the, in, the, in, the, in the case of linear system. So, for, for those of us who are who would like to have a link that is how you need to look at this given the initial condition given the state transition map how does the state transition map and the initial condition together define the trajectory. So, this is the probability of observing the entire trajectory from x naught to x 1 to x um, x i x k minus 1 to x k. Now, using the Markov property so this is one of the terms in the Bayes rule it is the second term in the numerator on the right hand side of 3. Now, I am going to consider the first term in the numerator of 3 on the right hand side of 3 and that is what is given by this z 1 colon k what do you mean means what I have all the observations from z 1 to z k I am conditioning it on the trajectory. Now, look at this now I have already computed the probability of observing the trajectory. So, conditioning this is known. So, given the probability that a particular trajectory is observed I can now condition on that particular trajectory I can then compute the probability of the observation condition on that trajectory that is the whole idea that is a very simple idea. Again we are going to apply the, the manipulation of conditional probability again and again. So, this can be written as probability of z 1 given z 2 z k x 0 to x k times probability of z 2 to z k and the same trajectory. Now, let us look at this now z 1 is, 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 is the observation at time 1 x naught x 1 these are the state of the system at time 0 and time 1 x 1 depends on x naught and z 1 depends on x 1 z 1 does not depends on x 2 what is x 2 x 2 is the state of the system at time 2 what is z 1 z 1 is the observation at time 1 the observation at time 1 does not depend on the future state I hope that is very clear. So, in view of the 
non dependence of the observation z 1 on states beyond x 1 that means z 1 does not depend on x 2 to x k. If it does not depend on x 2 x k the conditioning has no value I can drop that conditioning out of consideration. So, I can rewrite this term as p of z 1 conditioned on x 1 times p of then the rest of this the rest of the term comes in here right now. So, now you can see I am trying to bring a recursive structure into the system and this recursive structure is again a consequence of the Markov property consequence of the Markov property. So, let me let me say it once more if I have a time 1 state x 1 z 1 is an observation that comes at time um, 1 x 2 is a future state it makes sense to think about the system does not have the anticipatory power. In other words my today's observation of temperature is not going to take into account tomorrow's temperature today's observation is measured on today and perhaps some of the past even that has taken place. So, same consideration because of such simple arguments you can readily see the conditioning even though I have conditioned this on z 2 to z k x naught to x k today's observation does not depend on tomorrow's observation today's observation does not depend on tomorrow's state. Therefore, the dependence of z 1 on z 2 to z k can be dropped z depend on dependence of z 1 on state from x 2 to x k can be dropped therefore, z 1 can at best depend on x 1. So, the first term simplifies as follows that again comes from the Markov property as we observed. Now, look at this now this is the left hand side this is one of the terms in the right hand side the second this is the first term and the this is the second term. The second term and the left hand side are exactly the same except that the left hand side is from 1 to k the right hand side from 2 to k. So, what does it mean I have expressed a recursive structure this recursive structure now can be adapted to the second term on the right hand side I can further apply the recursive structure. So, if I apply this recursive structure continuously open it up I have that is called iterating. So, iterating iterating this we get this density is equivalent to product of product of probability of z i versus x i i is equal to 1 to k. So, we can now I have phi I have 4 I can substitute phi and 4 look at this now what is 4 4 relates the second term on the numerator on the right hand side of the base root. What is um, a phi phi re relates to the expansion and the property of the first term on the right hand side of the base root. So, I substitute 4 and phi in 3 simplify the trajectory given the observation the filter density is simply the marginal density of this conditional density integrated with respect to x naught through x k minus 1. So, that is what this one is. So, this is integrated x minus 1 x minus 2 and x naught. So, the entire expression the for the filter density in full form is given by this look at this now. I am multiplying 1 over the probability of observing the k first k observation 1 over probability of z of 1 colon k that comes from the denominator of the Bayes rule that was given in equation 3 the right hand side of the equation 3. The numerator of the Bayes rule I have utilized the, 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 the recursive property and broken down into several factors. So, one of them relates to one step transition probabilities now look at this now the structure is absolutely beautiful this this relates to the model transition probability which is given by the Markov process. This is given by the conditional density of the observation conditional density of observation conditional density of the observation this is the initial density initial condition if you want to call it and this is integration with respect to integration with respect to the 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 k time variable that is what comes from here that is what comes from here. So, this is a 
this expression is 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 a complex expression it's uh, it's it is it is but it is a easy it is easy to understand so the filter density what is the filter density the density of the state at time k given all the observation is equal to 1 over the probability of observing all the observations times the integral the k fold integral along the path from 0 to k minus 1 and the integrand is the product of the initial density the model one step transition probability and the conditional density the observation given the state. So, nothing could be more beautiful than this we know the conditional density we know the state transition distribution we also know the initial conditions what is the only thing we need to do we need to have it all multiply them have it all multiply them and that gives you an expression for the filter density. So, it is not that we cannot compute the filter density it is simply that computation of this difficult conceptually it is possible. So, <coughs> this is one part of the solution of the nonlinear filtering problem. Now, I would like to come to the, 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 the forecast density please understand filter density is the analysis. So, we have done the analysis part now I would like to be able to do the forecast part in, in Kalman filter equation the forecast depends on the previous analysis the analysis depends on the previous forecast it is this interdependency the forecast and analysis that makes the sequential sequential method um, uh, very, very very beautiful and, and extremely effective. So, now let us try to compute the forecast density what is the forecast density is the probability of given observation 1 to k I would like to be able to explain not only what happened up to k, but also beyond k. Given z 1 to k what happened up to k that is filtered that is done. Now, I want to know what is happening beyond that is why this is called filter density. Again I am now talking like a, a, a broken record this conditional probability can be written again broken down by applying the conditional probability rule again to gain the recursive form. So, this is equal to probability of x k plus 1 having observed the state from x naught to x k and having observed the observation 1 to k times the probability of being able to observe the state from 0 to k given the observations at 1 to k uh, observation from 1 to k. I hope that transition is clear it is simply a very simple probabilistic rule of trying to express the conditional density as a product of two other related conditional densities is a very simple is a very simple <coughs> mechanism. Now, let us come to the first term of this product term what is given I am interested in the conditional density of x k plus 1 defend the entire trajectory from x naught x k and the observation from 1 to k, but the process k is uh, x k is Markov. So, once the Markov process x k plus 1 depends only on x k and nothing else nothing else matters therefore, the first factor depends uh, 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 the conditioning depends only on x k. So, the first factor reduces to probability of k plus 1 given x k that comes from the previous discussion that we have already had we had already had. <coughs> therefore, the second factor the second factor is the right hand side of 6. So, let us go back to the right hand side of 6 the right hand side of 6 is the is the is the filter density. So, let us let us look at this now I, I would like to spend a, spend a minute on that. So, the probability density of x k plus 1 given the entire trajectory is 0 through k and the observation times probability given z, z observation 1 to k and this. Now, what is this part that is the filter density by 6 that is the right hand side of 6 therefore, by identifying this to be the filter density now I can I can express what I want. So, that is 8 is a beautiful expression for the forecast density. So, the the forecast density now can be written using the right hand side of 6 let us go back let us go back the right hand side of 6 is given by this expression which is the k fold multiple integral 
So I am going to I'm I'm going to copy that multiple integral in here. Therefore, the 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 forecast density is simply the is simply sorry the forecast density is simply integral of the entire path given the observation and the integration is from 0 to that and again I can I can decompose this from the previous argument to this integral please understand we have already done that decomposition therefore p k plus 1 of x k plus 1 is mouthful you can see it will probably take uh, uh, 5 minutes to write this slide I am trying to spend less than a minute on this you understand that but all I am trying to do is nothing new it is simply manipulation of conditional probabilities that is all what it is. So, except for the complications in the size of the expressions the ideas are extremely simple therefore by by substituting this quantity from the previous slide I get this part that is the integrand that is the integrand hopefully that is clear to all of us. Now, I can rewrite that integrand into the product of conditional density one step transition probability yeah I can I can I can express this as a one step transition probability times this quantity and that quantity is essentially f k x k and times one step one step transition. Hey look at this this is beautiful uh, what is that what is that we have we have said analysis k is equal to forecast at time k plus the Kalman gain d k minus h of x k f that is the that is the uh, data simulation step and to be able to get x k plus 1 f is equal to this is m times x k hat that is the that is the uh, uh, forecast equation this is the analysis equation we saw the embodiment of analysis equation previously with respect to the filter density this is the analog of this. Look at this now the forecast at time k plus 1 in the linear case is model times the analysis at time k. Now, let us look at this here f of k what is this this is the analysis at time k. Why is this called analysis at time k? This is not a vector that gives analysis, this is the analysis density that is the filter density. So, model operates on here, model operates on analysis, here, model operates on analysis density. What is the model? One step state transition matrix. Therefore, if I multi if, if, if I multiply the analysis density with the one step state state transition probability integrated over x k, I get this. So, I have already said this this is the analog of analog of the forecast at time k plus 1 is equal to model times the for uh, the analysis at time k analysis time time k. So, we have now considered both the equations. So, let us uh, let us try to uh, think of the nonlinear filter a uh, 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 little bit more simplification is needed. If you consider this conditional probability that can be written like this again by applying simple base rule this is a simple base rule uh, uh, I am sorry this one I should have said x k x k minus 1 the k and x were at the same level I am sorry for that this is product at x naught. So, that is the numerator part of it. So, this essentially for us from the base rule which is given the right hand side, but z the probability of the observation given given the the state again given by in long form given by this we already know probab the, the probability of observing k given the entire thing depends uh, 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 can be written as a prob product of these two conditional densities. But this one depends only on the state at time k. So, that becomes the conditional probability distribution of the observation given x k and then we get the, the second quantity from here. So, I get the recursive form by again I can rewrite this in this form by the Bayes rule this must be z k minus 1 sorry uh, z 
z k minus 1 this again must be x k x k minus 1 x k minus 1 I am applying the same base rule here 11. So, you can readily see you can readily see how I am able to uh, compute the probability of observing the set of all observations given the trajectory in this particular form as given by 11 um, as given by 11. The so, now look at this now substitute this 11 into 10 you, 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 you then you essentially get you get you get what you want. So, this is the this is the 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 forecast sorry this is the this is the filter density which can be written like this which can be again written from 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 substituting 11 uh, into 10 by substituting 11 into 10 we, we, we get this form and this is exactly the relation given in, in our book I'm sorry this is exactly the relation given in our book chapter 29 uh, equation 21 and section 2. So, with this we have readily seen the recurrence relation relating to f depends on p and p depends on f. Let me let me go back to and 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 and, and say equation 9 the predictive density depends on the filter density and the filter density and uh, the filter density uh, in in on the right hand side of 7 also depends can be rewritten as 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 the as the as the uh, uh, predictive density so these two equation together gives you gives you the expression for the nonlinear filter in 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 general term you can <coughs> now i'm going to further simplify f of k x k let me let me go back you can see there are lots of uh, 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 things to be done this is the equation 7. So, I am going to substitute uh, uh, 8, 9 and 10 and 11 to get back to the forecast I uh, am sorry the filter density coming back the filter density. So, the filter density again from fundamental principles is given by integral of, of this and that can be written by using Bayes rule by this then in the previous slide in equation <coughs> uh, uh, 10 and 11 we have broken this down by applying Bayes rule that gave rise to the factor like this which comes out of the integral and this is what I have within the integral. If I integrate this I, I get an expression which is probability of z k given x k times probability of p k x k the probability of p k x k. So, this probability of p k x k comes from here. So, the problem this integral in, the in its entirety gives rise to p k x k. Now, look at this this is the analog of the of the analysis. The analysis at time k plus 1 is equal to forecast at time k plus 1 Kalman filter times this. What is the analog coming in here? This is the filter density this filter density depends on the forecast density I am sorry this is the filter density depends on the forecast density and and uh, and uh, and uh, the observation. So, this is the density the observations and 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 that gives you the recursive form and this is the analog of the analog of the um, um, analysis step this is the analog of the analysis step yes this is easily said than done I hope you are able to keep track of the all the major major uh, uh, you are able to keep track of all the major issues in here uh, and 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 uh, that is the that is the uh, uh, relation that relates the forecast with 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 the filter the forecast of the filter forecast of the filter I, I, I hope it is it is clear. So, substituting again 11 in 10 you can see this relation is 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 again given by the the 29.2.1 in our book and that is the important relation that relates the that relates the uh, uh, predictor density with the filter density. So, in summary what is that we have accomplished yes I know I may have some of you might think that I may I may have gone a little fast, but again uh, this is an advanced course in this course we are we will not be able to hand carry you and show you every little step, but we have shown 
all the basic major steps uh, going from one step to another step is largely part of the exercise I, I hope you will be able to pursue but it is this will provide you a good big picture uh, uh, model of some of the algebra I hope I hope with this you are able to see the relation. So, 13 I am I'm sorry 12 12 relates the forecast to the filter 9 uh, 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 relates the, the filter to the forecast. So, 9 is the is the model forecast step 12 is the data simulation step you can readily see the data simulation step let us let us spend one or two more minutes on this. The filter density at time k is the predicted density at, 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 at time k if x k is known I, I can condition on x k I can condition on x k then this is the conditional density of observation and once I have conditional density observation the this ratio comes a, is, is again as, as, as a multiplying factor which, 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 which is essentially meant to induce that the density is the, the condition for the density is observed. What is the condition for density? The integral must be 1. So, you can think of this as simply a multiplying constant a multiplying constant and what are those? This is the ratio of the probabilities of observing the observations the ratio of the ratio of the probability of observing the observation. Yes, the program the 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 the, 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 the expressions look little complex, but the basic idea of going from forecast to analysis, analysis to forecast, forecast to analysis in the function space must be clear. It is this iteration in the function space, which is, which is an infinite dimensional space, which makes this iterative scheme impractical, except for in very simple cases. What are the simple cases? Linear Gaussian quadratic is one case where I can implement this because it reduces to updating the mean and the covariances. In the literature, they have identified a few handful of other cases, combinations <coughs> of nonlinear systems and and associated noise where they could explicitly express these integrals in closed form. So, other than these simple elementary cases. Uh, these equations in general are not are not easy to compute and hence the difficulty of nonlinear filtering. I want to re-emphasize it is not that we do not know how to do nonlinear filtering this has been done way back in the mid 60s. Our derivation depends on the, the development in Busey's book our development depends on the book by Busey. Busey, I, I, I did not spell it correctly. Sorry. Our our Richard Busey. The original paper was by Kalman. The second paper was Kalman and Busey. Kalman originally derived the filter in discrete time. At the same time, Busey was also deriving the Kalman filter in continuous time. When Busey submitted the paper. Kalman's first paper was already under review had, has been accepted. So, the reviewers asked both of them to get together and 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 and, and publish a common paper. So, first is Kalman, second is Kal Kalman Busey and Busey has been working in nonlinear filtering ever since 19 late 50s early 60s and and the derivation that we had given here is adapted from Busey's papers and and, and and a monograph he wrote. So, this essentially meant to provide you uh, the idea that filtering problem what is filtering problem the data the sequential data simulation problem in a nonlinear system is solved theoretically, but not computationally that is the story. So far, we had concentrated on deriving the filter equation and the predictor equation on the function space. These are infinite dimensional in nature, computationally extremely demanding. The next question is even if I spend a lot of effort to be able to get the entire distribution from the forecaster perspective. What kind of forecast product I have to develop from these probability distributions? 
if you think about it for a moment more often than not we are used to interpreting the mean we have a reasonably good interpretation of the variance. I do not know what would mean to a public consumption if I say the third moment is this the fourth moment is this. So, third moment relates to skewness of the distribution fourth moment is called kurtosis skewness of the distribution essentially tells you the mean and the mode may be different or the whole thing can be tilted one way or the other. The kurtosis if the kurtosis is large what does that tell you the tails are thick the kurtosis for the normal distribution is 3 for the standard normal distribution is 3. What is meant by saying the kurtosis is, 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 is larger the kurtosis larger statistically implies <coughs> that the probability mass for very large values of the state variable are larger. If the probability mass for very large values of a uh, state variable is large means what high impact events could occur with a larger probability that is what kurtosis larger kurtosis means that is called tail of the probability distributions. So, if you are trying to develop a forecast product generally we can only process the first moment second moment third moment I am not sure how we we use it in our interpretation of, uh, of, of events that could occur. Fourth moment if you say kurtosis is, 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 is more than 3 I am not sure it is very easy to interpret the likelihood of uh, uh, likelihood of rare events happening. So, kurtosis means uh, kurtosis large means rare events can occur much more frequently than smaller kurtosis that is what it means. So, in principle larger kurtosis means the potential for extremely rare events to happen with a higher frequency that is all what it means. So, looking from our ability as well as the usage of statistical quantity to interpret random phenomena in nature um, we generally settle down are being uh, settled down on being able to predict the first moment which is the mean the second moment or the second centered moment which is the variance. So, from that perspective while we have in principle derived expressions for the update of the filter equations or the predictive equation in the n dimensional space more often than not we are interested simply in moment dynamics. What is moment dynamics? How the mean update themselves or evolve how the variance evolves. Please go back the Kalman filtering is essentially dynamics of the first two moments mean of the covariance and that fits everything we generally know how to do in statistic and how to interpret in statistics. So, given these we are now going to look at how to derive the moment dynamics from the dynamics of probability density functions that is what we are after now. So, consider a nonlinear dynamics given by this consider a nonlinear observation given by this the forecast step what is the forecast step the conditional expectation of the best linear estimate. I hope it is clear from our discussion of the statistics uh, conditional expectation is the best estimate the conditional ex uh, expectation is the uh, best linear estimate and 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 we are we are we are now going to be looking at we are now going to be looking at what is the best way to be able to compute this conditional expectation of the forecast. So, the the forecast at k plus 1 is equal to expected value of x of k plus 1 given z at 1 to k z at z from 1 to k means what I have I have been given all the observations from z 1 to z k, but I'm, and I'm, I also know x k I also know x naught I know every state I would like to be able to predict x k plus 1. So, that is that is so given all the information x k as well as z k I would like to be able to uh, predict x k plus 1 and we have already seen in the uh, derivation of the Kalman filter equation forecast the, the the best estimate for the forecast is the conditional expectation of the state given all the observation. This expectation is taken with respect to the 
predicted density predicted density but x k plus 1 from the model is given by this conditioned on that conditioned on observation 1 to k the expected value of w k plus 1 is 0 therefore it reduces to the conditional distribution of the nonlinear value of x of k given x 1 to k. This conditional density I am now going to call as m hat of x k m hat of x k please understand evaluating this conditional expectation is not easy, but such a conditional expectation exists I am going to call it m hat x k. What is m hat x k? It is the average of the value of the state passed through the nonlinear map given all the observation the expectation is with respect to the, 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 the predicted density. So, it's it, you can really see m hat of x k is equal to is equal to is m hat of x k is not equal to m of x k unless m is linear only in the case of linear uh, linearity uh, 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 m of m hat of x k which is equal to m of x k that is the linear case. So, in general the expectation that we got in the previous step the conditional expectation in the, that we got in the previous step is not equal to m of x k. So, what is the idea I am trying to seek approximations I am going to seek approximations to the to the to the to the conditional moment. So, what is the what is the basic idea here I have analysis x hat k which is which is so let us pretend I have an analysis x, x hat k I am going to be I am going to be I am going to be um, approximating m hat of x k around around x hat k. Uh, 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 so, let us look at this what is, what, what is the idea here suppose I have x naught hat initial condition I know the analysis I am going to be able to make a prediction I would like to be able to make a prediction x 1 f and what is that this is equal to e of m of x 1 given z 1 and that is equal to m hat of x 1 then general this is not equal to m of x So, I should have put a thing in here therefore, therefore it is very difficult to compute m hat of x 1 because is a is a conditional is an integral relating to the conditional expectation. So, I can only approximate. So, what is that we are going to approximate we are going to approximate m hat in a small neighborhood around x hat of k. So, what is x hat of k? x hat of k is an approximate analysis known at time k. I am going to approximate my forecast around that. So, we seek an approximation of m of x k near x k hat. So, f of k is equal to m of x k minus. So, what is that? That is the that is the error m of x k is the actual value m of x k is the expected value. So, you can think of that as, as an anomaly f k hat is the conditional expectation you can see the hat refers to the conditional expectation. So, this is going to be this is this is f k. So, a conditional expectation of k f, f, k f of k given the all the observation that is 0 that you can readily see from the definition of f of k because if you took the conditional expectation the conditional expectation of m of x k given z 1 colon k is equal to m hat of x k please remember that is the definition and that immediately when applied to this immediately implies this when applied to this immediately implies that therefore, the error the anomaly has expected conditional expected value of 0. I am now going to define the forecast error which is given by this the forecast error is equal to x k plus 1 is given by this that is the forecast from our definition f of k this the first term the if you combine these two that is f of k therefore, if I use if I use 
by definition of f of k e k plus 1 is equal to e k plus 1 f is equal to f of k plus w k plus 1 that is the that is the that is the forecast error. So, you can you can write readily see how the approximation start building up I have f of k I have e of k plus 1 that is called the forecast error the forecast error has two terms one due to f of k another due to w k plus 1 this is the forecast error term which is very similar to what we have what we have in the in the in the in the linear case. So, if I consider the ex conditional expected value of e k plus 1 of f given this I can now substitute e k plus 1 which gives rise to these two terms the first term is 0 because of the definition of f, f of k the second term is 0 because of the definition of the noise therefore, e k plus 1 f is unbiased. So, therefore, x k plus 1 is an unbiased estimate this when combined with the least square estimate it becomes the minimum variance estimation. Therefore, x k plus 1 f is also a minimum variance estimation in our based on the, the, the basic statistical information we have created. So, compute the second order approximation properties of e k plus 1 f second order properties relates to the covariance structure. So, the covariance structure p k plus 1 that is equal to that is equal to oh, this must be this must be e. So, this must be e k plus 1 f times e k plus 1 f transpose given z 1 to k expected value that is the expression <laughs> e k plus 1 is f of k plus w k plus 1 f of k plus w k plus 1 transpose if you multiply both of them f of k and w k plus 1 are uncorrelated because f of k depends only on up to time k w k plus 1 is what happens after time k. So, this reduces to this equation. So, you can think of p k plus 1 that is a second moment you can think of. So, let us look at what, what, what is that we have accomplished we have we have a forecast look at this now we have a forecast in we have a forecast in in page 18 you have the forecast covariance approximation in pay I am sorry in the at this stage it is not approximation we have uh, computed everything reasonably exactly, but we are going to later see f k is not easy to handle because f k has m bar m bar has to be approximated therefore, uh, 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 but at least in principle this is the forecast covariance. In other words I am trying to derive the general expressions assuming everything is possible without worrying about computational uh, uh, issues right now. Uh, so, the data simulation step now can again be given by x k plus 1 I am trying to do what I did in the case of a linear a linear case I am going to do the derivation from from the scratch ground up. So, if I have I am going to make my analysis depends on a plus k times z k plus 1 you may remember in one of the earlier discussions of statistical estimation this is the structure of the linear estimation a is the vector k is the matrix. So, this is the and I'm, so you can express the analysis as the linear function of the observation where a and k have to be determined to make the analysis um, uh, unbiased and also analysis of minimum variance. So, with that in mind I have e bar uh, I am sorry e hat of k plus 1 is equal to the basic definition in here which is given by this equation which is given by this equation. So, this is the this is the equation for x k plus 1. So, my my job is to be able to find a k such that my job is to be able to find a k such that this is a blue x x cat hat plus 1 is a blue. So, if I did that if I did that sorry I am going to take the conditional expectations on both sides forcing unbiasedness that gives rise to the 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 value of a. Now, please understand I have k hat h hat h hat essentially comes from the fact that I have been given the 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 expression for the update. So, this is the expression for the update. So, I have a computed according to this relation sorry I have a computed according to 
this relation. Therefore, if I substituted this A in this expression which is in this expression sorry in this expression in page in, in page 21. So, this is the expression I am going to compute uh, I have already computed A I am going to substitute A in here in star. If I did that I am going to get a structure for A given by this. This when substituted in the previous expression get the structure you can see this is the this is the typical update from Kalman. So, so what is h bar? h bar is given by the conditional expectation please understand this is as difficult to compute as m bar x k h bar x k this is equal to expected value of x k let us go back I want to be able to remind you where it was. So, look at this in page 18 is given by the conditional expectation of the conditional expectation of the conditional expectation of m of x k given observations 1 through k and that is exactly what we are going to sorry. Oh, did I that is right this is this is conditional expectation given z 1 colon k likewise likewise for h h of x k bar h of x k bar in this case is equal to e of e of h of x k plus 1 given z 1 colon k 1 colon k and and uh, these are the two difficult quantities to compute. So, even though these are difficult quantities to compute but we know such quantity exists mathematically. So, we have derived the underlying expressions following the derivations of the linear Kalman filter assuming all the com of complicated integrals can be evaluated. Now, I am going to derive the moment dynamics. Let let g k be the difference h k h of x k plus 1 minus h of x k plus 1 hat. We already know from this definition if I take the conditional expectations of both sides that is 0. Therefore, this the analysis error is given by x k plus 1 minus x hat of k plus 1. I already know the structure of the uh, uh, x hat k plus 1 using the Kalman filter equation. So, this can be rewritten using the definition of g k this can be rewritten as this when combined with this equation. So, e k plus 1 look at this now the analysis error is equal to forecast error minus correction g k is a random quantity v k is a random quantity g, g k and v k are random quantity. I want to be able to compute the analysis covariance in this case this must be I think the left hand side must be p k plus 1 hat p k plus 1 hat is equal to if this is the analysis error expression this times its transpose conditioned on z is going to be p k plus 1 hat. If I multiply these two after I do lot of algebra I get this expression you can readily see in this expression I have a k is a matrix a k is a matrix given by g k e k plus 1 f conditional expectation on z 1 to k d k is given by c k plus r k plus 1 and c k is given by g k g k transpose again conditioned on that. So, there is a lot of lot of notations in here I can compute uh, I have an expression for a k I have an expression for d k I have an expression for c k. So, if I look at this expression I know I know d k I know a k I know p k plus 1 the only thing I do not know is 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 k I am sorry I, I, I know a k but I do not know k sorry. So, my job is to be able to find k such that so this this d is known I want to be able to find k such that uh, uh, so a k is known d k is known p k f is known k is not known. So, I am going back to the old homework 
how do I make the trace of p k plus 1 minimum with the appropriate choice of k that is the minimization problem that we have already involved in. This expression is a quadratic in k. So, this gives rise to a quadratic minimization problem. So, given this quadratic minimization problem I can I, I need to find k go back I need to find k such that it minimizes a trace of p hat k plus 1 which was given in, in the previous page. So, by method of perfecting the squares again I am going back to the exercises I have done earlier in the context of Gauss to Kalman I am doing exactly the same thing the, the, the mathematics are ab, 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 absolutely similar. So, I am trying to rewrite the equation for p k plus 1 hat this is the method of perfecting the perfect square and the method of perfecting the square if I want to be able to now look at the expression on the right hand side this is another method for 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 minimizing in the earlier case what did we do we computed the the we we minimized the ith term the ith term in 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 other words we minimized p k plus 1 i i with respect to a given rho of k minimize with respect to the ith rho in here I am in demonstrating another another basic principle we are simply trying to express the previous quadratic expression as the product of, 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 of these two this is called method of perfecting the square. So, this is one term this is another term d is known. Now, look at the structure now um, p k f is, is the sum of three terms first term is known and that is independent of k second term is known that is independent of k the third term is known it depends on k. So, if some term does not depend on k I cannot choose k to be able to change it. So, the only way to be able to affect k is to make those terms that are dependent on k 0 therefore, by picking k is equal to a k transpose d k inverse I can make this quadratic term to vanish in that case my best or the optimal uh, 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 covariance is given by this expression where a k is the matrix already known d k is the matrix that is already known. I would like to emphasize the following fact that this derivation that we had given is the generalization of the linear filter derivation. If m, m of x is equal to m times x h of x is equal to h, h times x this derivation I had given in the past 5 6 slides reduces to the derivation of the Kalman filter the moment dynamics for the Kalman filter. So, by camouflaging the difficulty in computing certain conditional expectation and, and we are able to derive the moment dynamics the first moment dynamics and second moment dynamics the mean and the covariance forecast mean forecast covariance analysis mean analysis covariance pushing into the background the details of the or the difficulties of the conditional expectation. Um, uh, computation, but giving them a name they I, I we know that exists by giving them a name I can I do not have to worry about the computability at this time I simply can carry on the derivation. So, we have completed the derivation of the dynamics of the first two moments in any general nonlinear uh, filtering equation which parallels the development in the linear Kalman case and how do we know it is parallels the development of the uh, linear Kalman case if you set m of x is equal to m times x h of x is equal to h times x our derivation essentially reduces to the Kalman filter equation. So, it is in that sense there is nesting it is in that sense it is it is it is a parallel uh, uh, derivation of the filter equation especially the moment dynamics for the nonlinear case. I hope this part is clear. So, in the in the earlier part we talked about the updating of the updating of the uh, uh, distributions. Now, we have talked about updating of the first moment and second moment assuming such filter density assuming such predicted density exists they do we may not know it exactly, but I can handle it mathematically that is what we have done that is what we have done. And this derivation again parallels the development of the linear minimum variance estimation 
it essentially rests on the fundamental principle the conditional expectation is the best mean square estimate. So, that is the fundamental statistical facts uh, fa as a fundamental statistical fact the whole derivation rests on I think it is in, in that sense it is a it is a unification of the derivation of moments both in the nonlinear case as well as the linear case. I hope I hope the reader will appreciate the, 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 the parallels and the role of conditional expectations and so on. With this <coughs> as a background now I am going to consider specific approximations. So, that gives rise to approximation to moment dynamics. So, until now the moment dynamics I have considered are, are, are exact in the sense are exact in the sense even though I do not know how to compute them such a thing exists let me plow through I got what I want. But once you realize there are certain quantities which cannot be actually computed we begin approximation when we start doing approximations we get the notion of approximate moment dynamics. So, approximate moment dynamics there are several degrees of approximation first order approximation depends only on first order Taylor series expansion of nonlinear quantities second order approximation rests on uh, second order Taylor series expansion of nonlinear uh, uh, conditional expectations. So, first I am going to derive approximation for the second order filter what is the second order filter the filter equations are approximate, but they are approximate up to the second order term the second order term in the use of Taylor series of in the approximations. Now, you can see wherever there is approximation Taylor always comes to your rescue. If you use Taylor what is the advantage I can cut the approximation at any order of accuracy in, in all practices we generally are able to handle the first order accuracy second order accuracy because that is what mostly <coughs> used in practice. So, to derive the 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 nonlinear errors we are going to approximate them. So, what are the nonlinear error terms go back f of k is equal to I think earlier we had we had denoted as uh, 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 lower case f of k let me go back and talk to you about it okay. In here in page 9 in, in slide 19 f of k is equal to m of x k minus uh, m hat of x k so, that is the same expression that is given in here too. So, I am seeking second order approximations look back even though I have called it capital F of k this we have earlier defined this to be we have earlier defined this to be defined this to be f of k g k is is again the same kind of thing with respect to h, but at time k plus 1. So, I am now going to uh, uh, be concerned with the forecast step m of x k. So, what is that I am trying to do I I am assuming I know x hat k. I also know m of m hat of x k is not equal to m of x k hat. So, I am going to approximate m hat of I am going to approximate this in the neighborhood of in the neighborhood of x bar k. So, that is what I am trying to do now. So, m of x k according to the second order Taylor series is m of x k bar. So, I am trying to do everything around approximation around x k hat. So, I have a Jacobian times the error I have this second order term in here where d m is the Jacobian and this is the d m d m is the vector that depends on the Hessian term. So, you can see this is the quadratic pop with respect to the the Hessian of m 1 quadratic form with respect to Hessian of m 2 quadratic form with respect to Hessian of m 1. We have already seen these things in a module on multivariate calculus how to have second order Taylor's expansion for maps. <coughs> so, it essentially comes from one of the early uh, um, um, slides on, on multivariate calculus. Now, I would like to be able to take the conditional expectations on both sides I have to take the conditional expectations of both sides of this equation conditional expectations on both sides of this equation given uh, uh, z k the conditional expectations on both sides given z k is given by m bar of x k 
is given by m bar of x k and that is equal to so by taking the conditional expectation on both sides of this I get the first term I get the first term I get the expected value of the third term. Now if you go back to the second term consists of the second term consists of the Jacobian at x k bar and e k. So, if I take the expectation of d m x k hat e k hat given uh, given observation z 1 to k that is equal to d m x k hat times e of x k hat given z 1 k and we have already shown that is 0 that this is 0. So, in view of that even though there are 3 terms on the right hand side if I take the conditional expectation I get only 2. Now, I am going to give you a little example to be able to illustrate these calculations. So, let let y be equal to y 1 y 2 let the lay, uh, the covariance of y is given by expected value of y y transpose which is given by this let us, let us assume the given by this matrix. Let us also assume a is a matrix which is symmetric. So, y is a random vector with this covariance matrix a is a symmetric matrix I am now considering positive definite quadratic form which is y transpose a y I am trying to compute the the expected value of this positive definite quadratic form and that by substituting this in here is the sum of 3 expectations because expectation of the sum is the sum of the expectations. Expectation of y 1 is sigma 1 square expectation of y 1 y 2 is sigma this must be 2 b sigma 1 2 plus c times sigma 2 square. It can be verified this is simply the trace of the matrix a p trace of the matrix a p is get, get, can be written as a times e of expected y transpose y the trace of the expectation expectation of the trace they commute therefore, this is equal to expectation of the trace of a y y transpose the trace remains invariant under the cyclic permutation therefore, trace is equal to y transpose a y y transpose a y is a scalar trace of a scalar is itself. So, that is equal to expected value of that therefore, we have come one circle around that tells you the 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 details of the calculations with respect to computing the expected value of this why are we interested interested in this computation let us go back to this term. What is this term from the previous slide this term is a vector each component of this is a quadratic form the the delta square m 1 delta square m 2 delta square m 1 they are all hessian matrices they are symmetric. So, y plays the role of e k a plays the role of the hessian therefore, expectation of this. So, the <coughs> I am sorry therefore, the expectation of the vector of hessians or uh, 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 this vector of scalar product let me let me talk about that once more sorry so what is this expectation has got to do with this is one half of expected value of e1 ek transpose del square m1 ek ek transpose del square m2 ek all the way up to ek transpose del square m1 ek if I take the expectation of a vector that is equal to expectation of the individual component of it the expectation of the individual components which is of the form E of E k delta square m i E k and this is a Hessian matrix this looks like this looks like this term this looks like this term that is why that particular term is this particular example is very meaningful. I hope I hope the, the relations are very clear I am just trying to give this example to be able to manipulate the expected value of the second order term in the Taylor series expansion e, e, that is a vector each of the component is a quadratic form. So, if I know how to compute the expectations of quadratic form I can compute the expectations of the individual 
elements of this vector and hence this example provides you a handle on how to compute the conditional expectation on the second term in the first equation on the top of the slide 26. Hope that is clear. Yes, it is mouthful. It, it takes five more than 5 minutes to be able to type this, but I am trying to spend less than half a minute, but you know the basic steps. So, using that example, I am interested in computing the quadratic form. So, this is the row vector, this is the matrix, this is the column vector. So, from the previous example, I can say this is equal to trace. So, from the previous example, what is the formula in here? Expected value of the quadratic form is equal to the trace of A times expected value of y, y transpose. That is the equation I am trying to use here. Therefore, this is this is A. <coughs> Sorry. Yeah, this is this is the matrix A, this is the expected value, the expected value of this PK. So, this is the Hessian, this is the covariance matrix P hat. So, we have computed we have computed the expected value of, of the term on the right hand side of the first equation. So, with that I am going to derive a vector a vector of second order corrections. So, this is the vector of second order corrections each of the terms are induced by term type terms of this type. The middle term was already 0 therefore, the forecast using the second order approximation is equal to is exact values m hat its approximate values m of x k bar plus the second order correction. That is the <coughs> that is the real kicker. So, this is called the second order correction to the forecast let me write that down. you can see you will learn a lot of probability uh, uh, manipulations when you when you do these kinds of computation that further helps you to visualize the power of the statistical arguments and and and, and the interaction between statistics and matrix vector uh, manipulations. I would like to anticipate suppose I, I, I do not consider the second order approximation I only consider the first order approximation the delta square will be 0. So, you can readily see if you make a first order forecast that is essentially the first order forecast is essentially equal to m of x k hat this is the approximation. The actual value of the forecast is x k plus 1 f is equal to m hat of x k. So, I am trying to replace this by this that is the first order. In the second order what do I do? I add the second order term. Therefore, second order error, yeah, second order forecast must be more accurate than the first order forecast. Where do you when do you consider what is the right order for approximation? It depends on the degree of nonlinearity. Now, if you go back, what does the second order correction term depends? Look at this now. Delta square M i is the Hessian of the ith component of the model map. If the model is mildly linear, uh, I'm sorry, mildly nonlinear the second derivative may not be too high. In that case you can you can essentially get away with the first order approximation. If your model is such that the, the second derivative the Hessian of each of the component is, 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 is strong first order approximation will not cut it for making forecast second order approximation is more meaningful. So, this essentially tells you by appropriately controlling the order of terms in the Taylor series expansion I can improve the accuracy of the forecast. So, this is second order accurate forecast. So, this is the second order forecast. I also want to may uh, uh, remind you first order forecast is lot easier. <coughs> Why first order forecast is lot easier? I already know x k hat from the previous step. I simply be able to evaluate the function map at the previous step. So, that is the first order, but to be able to compute the second order I have to do lot more arithmetic. So, second order forecast is definitely more accurate, but is computationally more expensive. So, what does it bring you? It brings you the accuracy versus time trade off. 
So, anybody who is involved in approximating any quantity uh, the degree of approximation and the uh, the degree of approximation related to the quality of approximation the cost of computing the approximation um, is will be the ultimate judge in trying to decide the order that we will feel comfortable with. So, using using the derivation that parallels the linear Kalman filter by trying to approximate m hat of by trying to approximate m hat of x k around x hat k around x hat k we have tried to arrive at a second order correct forecast. <laughs> now, if I am going to do a second order correct forecast what is its covariance? So, that is the level. Now, I have to talk about the covariance in order to be able to compute the covariance. Again, I am going to go back to the error in this forecast. The error in the second order forecast can be written like this where d m is the model Jacobian which we already know eta k comes from the second order term. Eta k comes from the second order term. We already know the error is equal to f of k plus w k plus 1. Therefore, the forecast covariance is equal to from here this equation follows very easily. The forecast covariance what is the forecast covariance p k plus 1 f is equal to expected value of e k plus 1 f times e k plus 1 f to the power uh, f, f transpose. So, that is the that is the uh, uh, formula. So, when I apply this formula using this uh, because f of k and w k plus 1 are not correlated it reduces to 2 term the cross term vanish f of k is given by the expression that we have seen earlier. So, if I substitute all these things and 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 and, and bulldoze all the details I get these terms. So, this is the expression for the forecast error covariance when the forecast is second order accurate. <laughs> now, let us take some time to be able to compute all the all, all the all the expectations all the conditional expectations in here eta k is quadratic in E k. So, now let us let let us look at this now <laughs> this is the most important part of the <coughs> whole step sorry. So, this is where we are eta k is quadratic in E k this gives this gives us to what is called the moment closure problem the this gives us to what is the moment closure problem. So, what is the moment closure problem if I want to compute the second moment it that depends on higher, higher, higher order moment if I want to be able to compute the first moment that depends on the higher order moment. So, let us look back in here x k plus 1 f that is the conditional expectation for the forecast. So, the conditional forecast depends on the second moment. So, first moment depends on the second moment, second moment depends on third moment, fourth moment. So, what does that tell you? You cannot compute these moments in a closed form because each one lower moment depends on the higher moment. This provides a computational difficulty that difficulty has been around for a long time in all nonlinear problem especially in turbulence they always deal with this. Uh, problem uh, which is called moment closure problem. So, what does it mean if a second order <coughs> uh, moment depends on the previous second order term and the higher order term they will simply approximate by dropping the higher order terms that is what is called a simpler moment closure approximation problem. The same moment closure approximation problem comes in here. So, dropping please understand I am trying to compute p k plus 1 f p k plus 1 is second moment where are the third moment terms comes in. So, let us look at this now this term e k plus 1 times eta k eta k depends on the second order term e k depends on the first order term the product of e k hat and eta k third order term. Therefore, you can readily see the the the, the moment closure problem coming and, and 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 derailing our ambition to be able to improve the accuracy. So, what is our aim our aim was to be able to use second order term to improve the accuracy for the first moment which you have already accomplished. Now, using that approximation for the first moment I am trying to develop an approximation for the second moment. 
but the sex expression for the second moment depends on second moments of other quantities and third moments of related quantities. So, I am going I, when I am trying to compute if I need third moment if I do not know the third moment I can compute the second moment. So, that is the issue in here. So, what are we going to do approximation ideas are very clear moment crusher problem this is intrinsic to nonlinear problem and how do we tackle this we simply close our eyes and 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 drop all those terms that we do not know. So, in trying to get a second order approximation drop the third order and higher order approximation that actually leaves that essentially leaves only these two terms I am sorry that essentially leaves with only these two terms the following terms are dropped. So, once I drop that my approximation to the second order I am sorry my second order approximation to the second moment is given by this. So, there are two things to be considered one what is the moment that is being approximated second what is the order of approximation. So, first moment depends on certain second order term second moment dependent on <coughs> higher order terms. So, the moment closer problem shows this ugly face. So, by considering um, a simple solution to this moment closer problem by dropping the third degree and higher degree term we get the expression for the forecast which is second order accurate. What is that? This is the forecast dynamics but this is the moment dynamics. I would I, I would like to <coughs> remind you this is very similar to the Kalman filter equation. In the Kalman filter equation what is that we have forecast is equal to m times p k m transpose plus q k plus 1. So, this is very similar to that d m is the Jacobian of the map um, uh, d m transpose is the Jacobian transpose. So, when m is m of x is equal to m times x d m d m of x is equal to m. Therefore, this relation even though we say this is second order accurate it looks like the Kalman filter Kalman filter uh, a linear case. So, you can see the analogy between this equation and that equation. So, I have I have derived the expression for the approximate evolution of the forecast and the forecast error covariance. Now, we can do the same thing for the data simulation step. I have expression for the I have the expression for the analysis that is equal to forecast plus the Kalman uh, uh, gain times the innovation. Now, h k plus 1 I can I can express h k plus 1 in the form of forecast. Now, look at this now to be able to make a forecast I am anchoring on the previous analysis to be able to make the analysis. I am going to make a, a banking on the previous forecast. The forecast depends on the, the x k plus 1 forecast depends on the previous analysis and the analysis depends on the forecast or we, we, can, we can even put it x k plus 1 is equal to x k plus 1 that, that relation still holds good. Therefore, I can approximate a h of x k plus 1 is equal to h of x k plus 1 f plus this again this is the first order term this is the second order term taking again, again the conditional expectation conditional expectation we already <coughs> have h bar what is h bar please remember h bar of of x k is equal to e of h of x k given z 1 to k all these are conditional expectations. The conditional expectation of e k plus 1 f is 0 therefore, this is the x second order accurate expression for h bar where delta square h again follows the same second order Taylor series approximation by in view of the example I have already incorporated all the information. So, this is the second order correction term this is the second order correction term I hope that is clear I am doing exactly ex similar to what I did in the case of a uh, model map except here the map is h. Therefore, I want to substitute back so the analysis so, what is the second order accurate analysis? The second order accurate analysis is equal to second order accurate forecast plus Kalman gain times the second order accurate innovation. So, this is the second order accurate innovation second order 
I create innovation. This is the second order accurate innovation. Now we want to be able to compute. So I have already approximated the analysis. I would like to be able to approximate the analysis covariance. Analysis covariance is given by this expression from our definition. We already know a k, we already know g k, we already know c k, we already know d k. Please remember these are the derivations I had already given. I am now going to substitute manipulate the whole thing therefore g of this is given by is given by <coughs> is given by x of k plus 1 there is no in here and I am going to express this by a second order Taylor series minus this. So, g k I am sorry there is a there is a there is a error term in here I will I'll, I'll conclude. So, this must be please go back I would like to go back and tell g, g there is a term in here that is missing I would like to go back to the definition of g k. So, you look at this now at the top of the page 23 g k was defined h of x k plus 1 minus h hat of x k plus 1 and that is what I am now going to have to pull in here. So, this is going to be this is going to be h hat of x k plus 1 <coughs> let us go back to 23 once more that right. So, this is please remember that this is the expected value which is being subtracted from h of x k I want you to remember that. So, g k is a kind of an anomaly in the in the in the, in the, in the nonlinear conditional expectation and that is that is what being done in here that is what being done in here. So, if I expanded this on the on the on the, on the, on the Taylor series expansion I know the Taylor series expansion is given by this I know the expansion for this is given by this. So, I have to subtract these two quantities if I subtracted these two quantities my g k now takes the form which is given by this now z my 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 z i k much like the eta k previously is given by this gobbledygook expression. This gobbledygook expression essentially relates to the error in the second order approximation which is again you can think of it second order anomaly if you wish to call it. So, a k is given by by definition is this if I substitute the value of g k from the previous consideration a k can be seen to be equal to this quantity. Now, I would like to be able to compute show that c k is given by I know I am I am going little 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 too fast for many of you, but I want you to understand these calculations are very simple I want to keep repeating that. So, d k is given by this expression k k is given by this expression p k plus 1 in, a, in in the end is given by this expression that is the expression for the analysis covariance for the expression for the analysis covariance. So, with this I am now going to summarize this is the final summary of all the uh, things we have done so far. So, I am going to give you the expression for the second order filter the second order filter. So, it is given in a form that you can write away write away uh, the program. So, this is the model equation this is the observation look at this now model is nonlinear observations are nonlinear we have the standard assumptions about w k v k I also have a standard assumption assumptions about x naught x naught is given by m of m naught p naught. Therefore, what is the second order accurate forecast this is the second order accurate forecast what is the second order accurate forecast covariance that is given by that what is the second order accurate analysis that is that. Now, please understand what is this term that makes the second order accurate this is the second order term that affects the forecast likewise this is a second order term that affects the analysis. So, this is the second order term that affects the analysis that is a second order term that affects the forecast that is why both the forecast and the analysis are second order accurate. This the even though the expression looks like the first order expression because of the closure we ended up having the second order accurate forecast covariance like this second order accurate analysis covariance by this and the second order accurate 
Kalman gain is this. Now, look at this now. Everything is approximation. Forecast is an approximation. Forecast covariance is an approximation. Kalman gain is an approximation. Analysis is an approximation. So, if you think back, hey, this is the best you could do. In the case of nonlinear system, second order approximation is the best you could do. So, this filter in the literature <coughs> has come to be called second order filter that helps you to approximate the evolution of the state as a function of time as a function of time. So, you can you can readily see forecast step and the and the analysis step they go hand in hand much like much like the Kalman filter equations are. So, this is a sequential second order accurate moment dynamics for the nonlinear filter. So, that is that that is that is the whole description of this. It is a second order accurate evolution of first moment and second moment of the forecast and the analysis within the context of within the context of nonlinear model and nonlinear observation. It turns out that this equation reduces to the Kalman filter equation when the model is linear. I'm going to approx I'm, I'm going to establish this now. If the model map m of x is equal to m of x, d x m is equal to m, the del square m is zero. Are you with me, please? I should say del square m i is zero <coughs> because each term, if del square m i is zero, the second order terms are zero. In and, and, um, and, and the whole thing reduces to the Kalman filter equations. Therefore, in this case uh, a second order filter implies or uh, reduces to the classical Kalman filter. So, in this sense this is an extension. When do you say A is an extension of B? A is said to be an extension of B when you specialize A becomes B that is called nesting. If an extension does not have this natural nesting property, then the, the extension does not have much, 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 uh, it cannot hold much water. The extension argument cannot hold much water. So, to say something is an extension of something else, I should be able to get that something else from, from the extended value if I set certain parameters, if I specialize set certain parameters to extreme values. So, in that sense, you can see the consistency. Please understand in my derivation of the second moment uh, in my derivation of the approximate moment dynamics I showed that our derivation parallels Kalman filter derivation and it, it, it reduces the Kalman filter when you make appro appropriate choices. Again I am trying to demonstrate the same thing. So, this this allows us to be to be able to maintain the beauty of nesting when you go from special to general or general to special. If you set all the moments, all the second order moments to 0, you get what is called the first order filter. First order filter in, in, in the literature is called extended Kalman filter. So, extended Kalman filters which many of you may have heard of. What is extension Kalman filter? Once Kalman filter was announced in 1960-61, very soon they were interested in extending to nonlinear cases. Very, they, they met with lots of difficulties. So, they started approximating the first approximation that was developed within the context of space travel was essentially extended Kalman filter. Extended Kalman filter in our notation is essentially a first order filter. First order filter is obtained from second order filter simply by setting the second moments to 0. <coughs> so, this is the model dynamics, this is the observation both are nonlinear. This is the forecast step this is the forecast analysis uh, the forecast covariance. I would like to remind you two things now the forecast covariance the expression for it exactly the same in the first moment and second moment, but the trajectory of the second moment dynamics second moment approx um, 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 are going to be different. Therefore, even though the expressions look the same the actual values will be different because the forecast trajectories in this case and in the previous case are slightly different because the second order term is going to affect the forecast trajectory. So, one thing we have to remember while the expressions may look the same 
the actual trajectories will not because the second order term alters the trajectory compared to the first order term. So, the forecast step again is similar to what we have except the second order correction term the data simulation step is again that that looks very much like the linear Kalman case this is the this is the <coughs> Kalman gain this is the analysis forecast these are again very similar to the second order filter what is the only difference the only term that I marked by second order approximation terms are absent in the in the in the in the in the, in the, in the table in in 35 compared to the one in 34. So, that essentially completes our our derivation of moment approximation to the nonlinear filter. So, general order general expression for the moment dynamics second order approximation first order approximation. So, what is that? So, if you are given a nonlinear system if if the system is not too big you can apply <coughs> the first order moment equation uh, the first order dynamics second order filter. Uh, so, you can experiment with by taking a small simple problem you can solve the problem by second order filter you can solve the problem by first order filter you can plot the trajectories of forecast from first order versus second order you can also plot the trajectories from first order filter analysis of it the, the analysis from both the cases. So, how do the analysis differ with the order of approximation to me that is a very good in and interesting exercise. It could be a part of a classroom computer related project on a model chosen and it turns out this if you change the model the quality and, and the quantitative differences between this approximation may not hold across various models. Therefore, when you want to be able to uh, uh, apply nonlinear filters to small dimensional problem it is better to do it in, in, in slightly different ways first order filter second order filter uh, and, and, and then compare the performance and then compare the performance. So, that will be a very very nice interesting class project I often in my in my teaching I give these projects in, 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 in my class and they are extremely very educative. The systems I give I do not give large dimensional system two dimensional three dimensional. So, what is the typical system I, 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 I like suppose there is a object falling freely from, from the sky it has been falling for so long that the acceleration is countered by with the friction. Uh, so, Stokes law comes into effect and the and, and the particle is descending with a constant speed. So, the, 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 the vertically it has attained the terminal so called terminal velocity. Uh, if a if a if in a friction filled medium if a bar if if if, if, a, if a particle is dropping down uh, uh, Stokes law essentially tells you it will reach a terminal velocity where the acceleration is going to be countered by the friction. I am putting a radar at, at, at the bottom I am trying to observe the position and the velocity of the particle through the radar and I am asking them to be able to assimilate a nonlinear model for the for the for the, for the free body and a radar observations. So, it is a very simple educative model using which one can bring out various uh, uh, discussions relating to nonlinear filters, nonlinear approximation, quality of nonlinear approximations. Uh, so, we have talked about second order filter, first order filter. I have now uh, 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 I am now going to take a couple of minutes in talking about another Kalman filter equation. These exercises are taken from our book, this is exercise 29.5 because this exercise is important is important I am going to talk about this this is called linearized Kalman filter. What is the linearized Kalman filter? I have a model equation x k plus 1 is equal to m of x k. So, what do I do? I pick a uh, 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 state x naught I compute the nonlinear trajectory x 1 x 2 x k then I induce a perturbation to x naught if you want to call it the unperturbed state it could be a bar state it could be a base state the perturbed state x naught is equal to x bar naught plus delta x naught it comes to x 1 it comes to x 2 it comes to x k. So, what is that we now know delta x k is equal to d at x k of m 
delta xk plus 1. So, let me, let me, let me write that equation clearly. <laughs> Sorry. Let me write that equation a little bit carefully. Delta xk plus 1 is equal to d at xk of m delta xk. A, this is the propagation of the of the perturbation. This is called in mathematics variational equation. Meteorologist calls it tangent linear system. We have already come across this equation in the context of 4D war and that is this equation. So, the, for this linear system delta x naught is the initial condition. So, what is that I do now? I am having a nonlinear system I consider the base trajectory this is the base trajectory. I am I superimpose a, a, a perturbation I superimpose an initial perturbation and talk about the dynamics of evolution of the perturbation that is a linear equation. <laughs> Excuse me this linear equation essentially tells you how the superimposed initial perturbation propagates on the top of the base state. So, now forget about the original nonlinear model consider this perturbed model this is a linear model. Now, let us assume I have been given observations originally. So, let us assume originally I have been given observation which is z k is equal to h of x k plus v x k plus v. So, now what am I going to do I am going to consider increments the observation. So, I am going to linearize z k along the base, base trajectory. <coughs> Therefore, delta z k is equal to z k minus h of x bar k. What is x bar k? Is the base trajectory. <coughs> to a first order approximation, I can say delta, uh, delta z k is given by this first order quantities. So, look at this now. I have, I have this as the model equation. My observation equation is going to be delta z k is equal to h times. I'm sorry. This is not. This is not right. My my my. This is this is equal to d of x k bar of h times delta x k. So look at this. This equation looks like x k plus one is equal to a k x k. This equation looks like z k is equal to h of x k. So you have a linearized observation you have linearized model. Now, add some noise to this linearized model to get this. So, this becomes a linearized stochastic model this becomes the linearized observation. If you have a linear model and a linear observation I can do a classical Kalman filter that filter going to give you an approximate estimate of the forecast and the approximate estimate of the analysis for the perturbed system by adding the perturbation the perturbed forecast and the analysis uh, uh, the, the perturbed analysis to the base I will get the actual. So, if I if I know the increment if I know the base by adding the increment to the base I know the actual. So, what is the what is the order of approximation here this is called zeroth order filter. So, we talked about second order approximation we talked about first order approximation now this is called the zeroth order approximation to the nonlinear filter. So, what do we do we simply create a linearized variational equation for the evolution of the model of, 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 of the perturbation across the base state. Then we consider a linearized version of the observation we throw the original models out you, are, you, you, you consider the linear model a linear observation as you are given model you do a linear Kalman filter a classical filter you compute the analysis you compute the forecast you add them to the base state you get the actual forecast and the approximation to the actual forecast and approximation to the um, actual analysis. So, this is called the zeroth order filter or the linearest Kalman filter is a very interesting exercise. So, you can <coughs> take a simple nonlinear problem and do it in three ways and look at the quality of approximation in 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 and, and, and what do I get what do I lose what is the computational cost this could be a very interesting exercise 
and uh, this module has been a summary of our chapter 29 and uh, that completes our discussion of, of nonlinear filter. Yes, this module is very dense because nonlinear problems are, are not easy. So, we have we have on one part the stochastic dynamics the Markov property on the other hand we have nonlinearity. Uh, on one hand we have ga conditional Gaussian distribution on the other hand the conditional Gaussian distribution do not transfer itself as Gaussian for the, the predictive density. So, we have tried to deal with it exactly as far as we can and derive the uh, uh, update in the infinite dimensional space then we want to come to the real world of finite dimensional uh, computations. When we came from infinite dimensional space to finite dimensional space we had moment approximation, but moment approximation even though is an approximation even this approximation is riddled with what is called a closure problem. So, I have to tackle the approximation at several levels. So, if you superimpose one level of approximation to another level of approximation to another level of approximation ultimately when you, uh, when, when, when the fog clears you can have essentially a second order accurate filter, first order accurate filter, zero third order accurate filter. These three are considered to be meaningful approximations to the nonlinear filter problem. With this we come to the end of the discussion of nonlinear filters. Thank you.